We're in our garage and test facility. Let's see what we're driving this week. I hope it's something good for off-roading with this nice weather we're having. Well, not only do we have a Jeep Wrangler, we have the upgraded Rubicon. That makes it even better. And as a bonus, we get the all-new Eco Diesel engine we've been waiting for. There are now three engines available in the Wrangler line. Starting with a 285 horsepower V6, a 270 horsepower turbo four-cylinder, and this three liter diesel at 260 horsepower. So obviously horsepower, this comes in third. While this diesel puts out the least amount of horsepower, it comes in first when you rate the amount of torque. A whopping 442 pounds feet at 1400 RPM versus the four cylinder turbo at 295 and the V6 at 260. For another comparison, the 5.7 liter V8 found in the Ram pickup truck puts out 370 horsepower, but the torque rating is 395 foot-pounds, still less than this 3.0 diesel at 442. Another advantage of the diesel is the fuel economy rating. In this case, 22 in the city, 29 on the highway, compared to the turbo four at 22 in the city, 24 on the highway, and the V6 at 18 to 23. We'll be taking this out on the road to get the real world fuel economy. See what it really does. The base price of a Wrangler starts around $29,000 for the two door with the manual transmission. If you want the diesel, it's four grand extra for the engine and two grand extra for the eight speed automatic that's mandatory. And the price goes up from there. Quite a lot in this case. I'll just scroll down and let you read for yourself. All the standard features and all the options. Yes, sir. E. Sixty grand. Let's step into the cabin and see what we have here. Nice leather seats. You should for your sixty grand. A manual emergency brake, which is far better than those horrible electronic emergency brakes. Yeah, it takes up more room, but so what? The gold fashioned shift knob, four wheel drive high, four wheel drive low. There's no automatic four wheel drive for the street if you get the diesel. Sorry. Very simple to use climate controls and radio controls. Down here, your off road controls and power windows. All very easy to use. We get a very simple easy to read gauge cluster. The info screen is not the largest I've ever seen but large enough for my use. Will probably be for yours too. The only complaint I have with the interior has to do with the seats, mainly the headrests. Well they do adjust for height up and down, they do not adjust for angle which is way too extreme here wants to push my chin into my chest. I find this totally unacceptable and very uncomfortable. Fortunately, these seats are not in all the Wranglers, just the upgraded ones. This needs to be changed. This concludes part one of the video show and tell. Part two, we're going to go out and do some driving, some off-roading, highway fuel economy testing, and test these headlights in the dark. We'll do that right now. It's dark enough. Let's take these lights out and see what they do. Look pretty bright to me. Here we have the low beam only building 100 feet away. Extremely bright, but not as tall as I thought it might be. Now we have the high beam. Lots of light in the center for sure. Here we have the brights only building 300 feet away. Certainly illuminates quite well. Low beam, bright, but only goes out about two-thirds of the way. Back country roads, you'll need the brights. Overall, pretty good headlights, though. In the Jeep Wrangler series, there can be a lot of variation in ride quality because you have the long base four-door, short base two-door, small tires, big tires, heavy with the diesel engine, light with the turbo four. Each one will be different. 
that being said, we're going to take some speed bumps around 20 miles per hour. See how this setup does on impact. Here comes number one. And it hurt it, but it didn't feel too much. Bump number two. The rattling noises you hear, it's not the Jeep, it's the tools I have in the back. Here comes number four. That was the big nasty one. Didn't do too bad. I'd say it passed. The real proof and ride quality is taking it off-road in the real world, and we'll be doing that real soon in this video. The diesel engine adds around 400 pounds of weight to this vehicle, but with this amount of torque, acceleration is still pretty good. Yeah. Lots of pulling ability here. For your information, this vehicle has 2,691 miles on the clock, and since then, you got 23.7 miles to the gallon. A small portion of this mileage was put here by me. I don't know how the other people were driving. They could have been coasting downhill at 10 miles per hour for all I know. But this is the number we get for this type of mileage. In the meantime, I'm going to tack on another 700 miles. We're going to do four fuel economy tests. One at 75 mile per hour highway cruising on flat terrain. One at 75 mile per hour cruising, climbing steep grades. One driving on flat roads around 50 to 60 miles per hour. And some off-roading. Four fuel economy tests coming up. There have been a lot of complaints for us about the power steering system in these new Wranglers and I can see why. It's way too light, has no feel, no feedback. At highway speeds, the steering just wanders, there's no center point. Very annoying system on the pavement. Now that was the bad news for the power steering, but there is a positive angle to this. If you're driving off-road, hitting heavy rocks and digging into sand, the last thing you want to do is fight the steering wheel. In this respect, the disconnect of the power steering system is an advantage. A good system for off-road, just not pleasant to drive on-road, but since this is an off-road vehicle, I guess I shouldn't complain about the power steering that much, and neither should you. And here's what we got on the fuel economy for our 58 mile run, 23 mpg. Compare that to the 22 mpg I got off the four cylinder turbo some time ago, and the 21 mpg I got off the V6. All three pretty close, although this one's better, but not by much. Am I disappointed I didn't get the 29 MPG claimed on the window sticker? Not really, because I knew I was never going to get it. I don't think you are either. We just did 85 miles on the freeway, climbing from 1,500 feet to 5,000 feet. All uphill. Let's pull over and see what the fuel economy is. Just under 22 MPG, not bad. On these rough dirt roads, the Jeep is always a vehicle that's going to bounce around quite a bit, especially with these big tires, but the suspension is doing a great job absorbing all the impacts, allowing you to go pretty quick, so I'm not complaining. If you're looking for torque to climb steep grades, this is the engine for you. Not even breathing hard. Ah, water. Nice to see when it's 110 degrees outside. Well, this is where we normally cross, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen today. Not even in a Rubicon. Oh well. 
I think I see dinner. Rabbit stew on the left. Look at those ears. We're going to stop at the ranch headquarters, check the fuel economy, and do some more ranch patrolling. Maybe some 4x4 video. I'm going to have to go down to Home Depot get some new furniture. The rats ate my bed. I'm going to go sleep in the Jeep. We reset the mileage computer and from getting off road we're doing 13 miles to the gallon on this rough terrain in 4x4. A lot of 4x4 low. I think that's pretty good mileage considering. Also, thanks to the torque output, the pulling ability, climbing steep grades is fantastic. Certainly no complaints there. If you four wheel where there are a lot of gates, it always comes in handy to bring a servant to do it for you because I don't like getting out doing it myself. Just a 4x4 tip for you. At one last attempt of fuel economy, I'm going to take this dirt road, keep it around 55 to 60 miles per hour. One last attempt to see if we can bump up the fuel economy. We're coming to the end of the line. We'll pull over and see what the fuel economy turned out to be. By the way, this was in two-wheel drive, not four-wheel drive. Well, if you keep your speed under 60 miles per hour, closer to 55 most of the time, this is the result. So if you live somewhere where the speed limits are low, backcountry roads, you might be able to do a figure like this as well. Only a Jeep isn't about fuel economy anyway, it's going out and having fun and hopefully getting an engine that can pull its own weight. And this one certainly does, there's no doubt about that. Well, who have we here? Donkeys. Is that the Civil Democrats or Republicans we're looking at? Well, now we're home. Time to wrap up this video. So after a week of driving, what do I think about this 3-liter EcoDiesel? And how does it compare to the other engine choices? I've driven all three, and as far as performance goes, this EcoDiesel comes out number one, mainly because of the torque rating. Second place, the four-cylinder turbo comes in second for the same reason. It's understandable because both of those engines were designed from the ground up to be in off-road vehicles. By comparison, the base V6 engine was designed for minivan use. doesn't have the torque output of the other two. It comes in third as far as performance goes. But on the flip side, don't discount the V6. Number one, it's $4,000 cheaper than the diesel. That can buy a lot of gas. And number two, it's a proven reliability record. Good for 150,000 miles easy, maybe 200 if you take care of it. By comparison, the 3 liter diesel and the 4 cylinder turbo, they're new engines and we just don't know how they're going to hold up yet. Also keep in mind if you want the 3 liter diesel, it's a lot more than paying the extra 4 grand for the engine and 2 grand for the automatic transmission. It's a limited production engine. You will only find them in the maximum loaded Jeep Wranglers with the expensive price tags like this. Plan on spending 60 grand easy. If you have a big bank account and can afford 60 grand for Wrangler, I say by all means try the diesel. Go all out. Here are some videos to other off-road Jeeps we've driven. Just click and watch and subscribe. I need the gas money.